Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, today is the inaugural uh, JCAR and silicon chip mini project, uh, code name JMP001. Um, I announced, uh, I, I did the introduction to this yesterday. I announced it a bit before that. Uh, this is the first project. Um, so we're uh, just uh, developing the format of, of this uh, part of the show. Um, I'm uh, after this welcome. Uh, there'll be uh, a reading of the article in the magazine, which we'll do over here on the bench. Uh, after that, we'll jump onto the computer to have a look at the article on the web. Um, as a part of doing that, we'll um, order the parts that we need for the uh, kit construction from JCAR, and we'll just add them all to our cart and figure out what the price is for this particular project. Um, then we'll. Um, when the parts are available or have arrived, the, um, we'll bring them over to the bench and we'll construct the kit. After the kit's been uh, put together, we'll do a test and measure on the bench or on the computer as uh, suitable. And then we'll wrap it up with a conclusion. So uh, this is the welcome. I'll show you um, the magazine in which the first uh, 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 JCAR Mini Project uh, is published. This is the May 2024 uh, edition of the Silicon Chip Magazine. It contains the inaugural Mini Project, which we'll be having a look at uh, just now on the bench. So let's jump over to the bench and have a look at the article, and uh, then we'll get on with the rest of the video. Here we are on the bench. So um, we're just going to flip through to page 60, where the Mini Projects start. Um, this, as I said, is the uh, May 2024 edition of the magazine. So, page 60, page 37, 66, 60. So, this is it, the inaugural uh, project. It's called the Symbol Keyboard. It actually looks like it's uh, going to be pretty cool. I think after I construct mine, I'm going to leave it uh, in, uh, constructed and use the, uh, use the keyboard facility on my computer. Um, so this is uh, mini project number one, uh, made by Tim Blythman, um, uh, sponsored by J Carr and produced by Silicon Chip. Mag Chilicon Chip. Eh, Silicon Chip. Now um, it, it's the symbol keyboard. Um, we, uh, I'll just read you the article. Um, we are already using this mini project every day. It's easy to build and requires only a Leonardo board and a display shield. It's a symbol keyboard, allowing you to easily type symbols and other characters that don't appear on regular keyboards. And there's a parts list down here for the symbol keyboard, JMP001, uh, the Arduino Leonardo, uh, a 2.8 inch color LCD touchscreen shield, and a USB uh, micro B to type A cable. So um, we'll be um, uh, sourcing those components from JCAR just later in this video, but first we're going to read um, the article and the instructions, uh, and then we'll, we'll pop over to the web and see what we can see. So, many of the articles that we write include scientific, mathematical, or typographical uh, <coughs> typographic symbols that aren't easily entered with a keyboard. In Windows, for example, some symbols can be entered from the so-called emoji panel. Previously, tools like Character Map allowed symbols to be copied to the clipboard for pasting into a document. However, those methods are slow and awkward. Windows also supports alt codes, which allow a code corresponding to a spe specific symbol or character to be entered on the numeric keypad. Many of the available characters come from what is known as code page 1252. Since a Leonardo board can emulate a USB keyboard, it can generate these key sequences as needed. While the series of push buttons could be used for input, we've decided to use an LCD touch panel as it allows us to customize the available symbols. By using a display shield, assembly is simple. Just plug the shield into the Leonardo board. Of course, it needs to be programmed. We have used the Arduino IDE for this, so it is easy to modify or customize. The photo shows a complete symbol keyboard populated with our choice of symbols. We often use these symbols when writing our articles, but there are many other useful ones in the Windows code page 1252 set. Many are accent accented letters used in languages other than English. Note that the alt code scheme only works on Windows computers, so this comp keyboard will not work on other operating systems. Alt codes 
should also work in Linux but for Mac OS you would have to modify the software to use either option codes or text replacements. Assembly and programming. Plug the display shield into the Leonardo and use the USB cable to connect it to a computer. That completes the physical assembly. Next download the sketch, uh, extract the zip file and sketch. Uh, open the sketch with Arduino IDE and upload the sketch. You shouldn't need any external libraries. While the sketch is compiling, open a text editor window, for example Notepad, to test the symbol keyboard. This will also help to catch any stray keystrokes if there is a problem. You should see the LCD screen initialized with the graphics seen in our photos. Uh, pressing any of the symbols on the display should cause the corresponding symbol to be typed into the text editor. In that case, all is well. If your display is not correct, try pressing the touch panel to see if that triggers keystrokes. That should still work even if the display is wrong. If the touch panel isn't responding, try reprogramming the Leonardo. Software details. The software is relatively straightforward. It displays a series of symbols on the LCD and waits for a touch to be registered on one of them, after which it sends the appropriate key sequence to the attached computer. The Arduino AVR board profile, which supports the Leonardo, includes the keyboard library. We have written a function that wraps the sequence needed to send the alt code. The xc4630d.c file is customized for the specific display shield we're using. You might need to set the shield version near the top of th this file. We're using xc4630 underscore v4 slash define, which works well with a recently obtained shield sample. The bitmaps.c file contains the data for displaying the symbol images on the screen. We created them as 64 by 64 pixel files in Microsoft Paint and uh, by entering the necessary alt codes to create uh, matching text characters at a 48 point size. Uh, there's a, there's a, a graphic here. Uh, the graphic uh, says... Um, The symbol keyboard is a simple and compact project based on Arduino Leonardo and 2.8 inch LCD touchscreen module. It is usable without an enclosure, although it's a good idea to add some rubber feet to protect your desk. Okay, great. Um, they didn't put the rubber feet in the, uh, in the things. Let's see if we can find rubber feet on the web later on. We'll remember that. Okay. We then used, uh, this is going on with the software details. Uh, we then used the online converter at siliconchip.au slash link slash abu6 to generate the data used in the program. You can use similar steps to create your own custom symbol images. You also need to set correct alt codes to type them. We found them on the Wikipedia page at w.wiki9sgq. Uh, we knew uh, they would type the. We knew they would type the corresponding characters later, since we used the alt codes to generate the corresponding bitmaps. Customization. The customize <coughs> to customize the symbols, you must change the alt code in the codes array. Uh, the appropriate code can be found in the Windows 1252 code page, link above. You will also need to add a matching monochrome bitmap to the bitmaps.c file and add a reference to that part in the bitmaps array. Apart from creating custom bitmaps to display different symbols, the orientation of the buttons on the display can be changed too. The xc4630 underscore rotate command in setup determines the orientation. Values 2 and 4 are landscape mode, while values 1 and 3 give portrait orientation. Rows and columns should be changed to 4 and 3 to make the portrait orientation work correctly. The button width and button height defines determine the spacing between the buttons. Using a spacing of 80 pixels uh, with bitmaps measuring 64 pixels means that there is a comfortable amount of room between them. If you are confident with the Arduino IDE, you can change these values to fit more buttons and thus symbols on the display. You could create smaller bitmaps too. The colors can be changed by modifying the FGC and BGC defines. 
the available color names are listed in the XC4630D.C file. Of the 16-bit RGB565 color values can be used here instead. Note that you must uh, re-upload the sketch for any changes to take effect. And here's an example here of the uh, the 64 by 64 pixel bitmaps, which were created with a 48 point font in Microsoft Paint. We made them by typing the same alt codes that we set the program to produce when they are selected. Conclusion. Oh, well, we might as well look at this as well. These characters in the Windows 1252 code page can all be typed by the symbol keyboard. Alt codes for Unicode characters exist but require the Windows registry to be modified to enter them. Fascinating. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't use Windows much these days anyway. But there's the code page. Cool. Conclusion. It's a simple build, but the symbol keyboard has already become a handy tool for us while we write our articles. We can't believe we didn't think of it earlier. It is a great idea. So that's it. And then we're on to the next one. So this is the first one. So um, uh, the next thing is we're going to jump over to the computer and have a look at the article on the web and uh, order the parts we need from JCAR. So uh, let's jump over to the computer and get on with things. Here we are on the computer. So uh, <clears throat> let's fire up our web browser here. Now, what are we looking at? Okay, this is all how we left it the other day. Very good. Um, so, uh, what are we going to do? We want to find the, uh, the the link down here. That's project number one, uh, symbol USB keyboard. So we've already got that, that uh, entered here. So let's open that in a new tab. And that'll take us over to the article itself. Um, which is what we've just been reading. We we just finished reading this <coughs> um, in the in the magazine. So it's just the the two pages, just the two pages side by side for the first uh, project. The parts list of the Arduino Leonardo, uh, the 2.8-inch color LCD touchscreen, and the USB micro B to Type A cable. So what we're going to do is open the uh, JCAR codes here, here, and here. Um, and uh, let me just see, have I got anything in my cart at Jaker? I don't believe I do. All right. Um, so that's good. So let's go over here and we'll add the Leonardo, the uh, touchscreen module, and the cable. So over here, uh, this is the Duino Tech Leonardo R3 main board. It's $34.95 from Jaker. Uh, let's have a read. I think there's some specifications and stuff. There's some downloads, so let's check it all out. Uh, most of the Duino Tech models use two chipsets, one for the main controller, one for the USB communication. The Duino Tech Leonardo combines both these functions into a single IC, which opens the door for more advanced USB functions. The development board also boasts more analog inputs, 12, and an extra uh, pulse width modulated channel. Features, fully Arduino compatible, AT Mega 32 4U microcontroller, <coughs> 4U, 32U4 <laughs> microcontroller, um, EEPROM, uh, uh, one kilobyte, uh, speed 16 megahertz, built in USB serial, IO, digital IO, 20 pins, seven are configurable as digital or pulse width modulated uh, seven pins for pulse width modulated cables uh, capable capability uh, analog inputs 12 pins six are shared with digital pins uh, serial ports two one USB one UART more supported via software serial library input voltage 5 volt DC regulated via USB port or 5 volt pin uh, 7 to 12 volt via uh, v, v in pin Onboard uh, regulator supplies, 5 volts when unit is powered via VN pin. Okay. Uh, for more info on Arduino, shall we have a look at the video? 
Look, I've just opened that uh, video. I I, uh, I couldn't hear the audio because I didn't have my headphones on, but you could hear the audio. It was being correctly recorded. So uh, let's jump back over to the Arduino Learning Kits video from JCAR, which we found on their website. And let's subscribe to JCAR while we're there. Um, oh, I'm not signed in on this account. So... Um, uh, give me a minute and I'll sign in. All right, I'm back and I'm all signed in, so I'm ready to hit subscribe. There we go. I am now subscribed to Jaker. They've got uh, 8.7k uh, subscribers, which isn't really very many. Uh, of course, it's about two orders of magnitude more than I have. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's watch this video from Jaker. Looking to get into Arduino but don't know where to start? The Duino Tech Learning Kit is a great way to start learning about electronics and programming. It has all the parts you need to learn the basics. You can even build this game, Snake Game, with the parts from the kit. We even created a user manual and video to explain how each of the kit components work. We also explain how to write simple programs and put them together to make bigger creations using the free Arduino software. Our dedicated Arduino webpage has a variety of Arduino projects, products and online resources where you'll find a community of people who are passionate about building their own ideas into projects and are willing to share their knowledge, designs and code. The great thing is that you can keep creating beyond the Duino Tech Learning Kit. Our extensive Duino Tech range of Arduino parts includes shields, displays, modules, sensors, motors for building robots and other accessories starting as low as $5. So come in and visit your nearest JCAR store for all things Arduino and start creating tomorrow, today. Alright, well there you go, there's the ad from, uh, from JCAR. Now, look, um, I'm just going to add uh, a folder here, add folder, and I'm going to give it the code JMP001, and I'm just going to record some of the links that we uh, that we used. So, uh, the first one is the mini projects live, and um, and then after that, we've got uh, the article itself. So let's move that in there. And uh, then we've got the various bits and pieces from uh, JCAR, which we're looking at now. Uh, in there. And uh, that video, this is the video uh, here. And they did mention their page. So uh, let's see if we can find that. Uh, doesn't seem to be linked here. I wonder if we could search for it. Uh, all right. Well, that's products and stuff. Oh, there we go. Categories. Arduino. Are we finding their Arduino page? This is the various Arduino bits and pieces you can buy, but they did say they had a Arduino page. I wonder if it's just Arduino. What do you reckon? Okay, Arduino just redirects to projects. Um, they do have a cool range of projects, don't they? Might as well dump that link in the uh, in the notes as well. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't see their. Uh, Arduino specific stuff. Do we see that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's jump back over to the uh, Leonardo. So we read about its specs. We saw the video about the Arduino from uh, from JCAR. Here are the specifications. So this is size, volumes. It's got 32 kilobytes of program memory, uh, inputs, outputs, voltage, 5 volts, uh, RAM, 2.5 kilobytes. Okay. Uh, downloads. There's a data sheet. Okay, that's great. So uh, I wonder what we've got in uh, on this computer. Oh, there, look, I've been here before. <laughs> 
So um, uh, this is the data sheet, the XC4430, C4430, that's it here. Okay, so we've, we've got a copy of that data sheet. Uh, this is it. Uh, it's one page, there we go. Okay, uh, Duino Tech, uh, it's a main board, main microcontroller, add shield to modules, uh, dimensions, specs, 18 mega 32 U4. Uh, there we go. So that's good. That's what it looks like. Alright. Did you know? Master Arduino, most Arduinos have one serial UART port on pin 0 and 1. This, board, this port is used to program the Arduino and talk to your computer via USB, or it can be used to connect an external serial device. However, it cannot do both at the same time. If you have a module or shield hooked up to pins 0 and 1, you must disconnect it before you can program the board. The Duino Tech Lite solves this problem by improving uh, by providing two serial ports, uh, one for programming a USB function and a second port on pin 0 and 1. This means you can program the board without having to disconnect your external devices from pins 0 and 1. Oh, that's good to know, isn't it? Very good to know, because I actually had that problem at the moment using the Nano for my uh, CCC uh, Crustaceans Chirp Chirp Challenge project, which I'm working on, in which I'm making a MIDI, um, a MIDI device with my friends from IRC. So that's excellent to know. The Leonardo is definitely in my future. Great. Um, and then there's articles. There we go. So there's various articles and projects uh, for the... Uh, for the Arduino uh, Leonardo. Excellent. Um, will we have a quick look at these? Why not? Let's have a look at these two articles. And let's pick, uh, what do we want? Fingerprint login controller. That sounds pretty interesting. So uh, here's the pin drops article. Uh, learn the best way to remove solder header pins that are missing with your game plan. Especially if you're just starting out with Arduino, you notice that a few projects, such as the GPS speedometer and the music beat bar, need you to reconfigure the header pins. In some cases, the factory default is to have the pins on the wrong side of the board of the project. Sometimes pins you need are obstructing components you do. Uh, well, instead of reinventing the wheel, check out this best practice overview. We also have detailed step-by-step -step guide with photographs if you need a little bit of extra help. Clamp the module, warm the soldering iron, clean the pad, mop up the solder. July 2019. Okay, and the module squad. These top five input-output devices for Arduino will get your creative juices flowing. Joystick module, RFID read and write. RGB LED module, laser diode emitter, and LDR sensor. That's a light dependent resistor. August 2019. And here is the fingerprint login. So, uh, okay, they've got code on GitHub, JCar Electronics. I didn't know they, uh, I didn't know they had a, 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 J, a GitHub. So, okay, project resources, and okay. Well, let's uh, let's pop over to GitHub. Sick of typing in your password every day when working or studying from home? Use our completely extensible fingerprint login system. Isn't that cool? Very cool. All right. Well, I think we want to uh, keep a note about that project because that sounds really quite cool. Let's chuck him in there and let's see what's on GitHub at uh, at JCar. So, how many repositories? 109 repositories. And the ones that they've got pinned, uh, or the popular ones apparently, Arduino Tech Starter Kit for Arduino, Solar MPPT Charge Controller, GPS Speedometer, they mentioned that earlier, uh, Facial Recognition Door Lock, that's cool, ESP8266 Power Monitor, and Wi-Fi Control Strip Lighting, interesting. All right, well, let's make a note about that. Now, uh, we're on to the next part. So the first, uh, the um, back on the uh, Leonardo, we're gonna add one to cart. So we should have uh, one item in our cart now. Let's just check we do. Okay, so now we've got to add the, uh, now it says here 2.5 inch, um, but elsewhere it says 2.8 inch. 
Uh, so who really knows? Now I think this is the same video we watched earlier, so we won't watch that again. Um, this LCD touchscreen can also be used for an Uno R3 mainboard, uh, but will utilize all I2C control pins. Micro SD card sold separately. Okay. Uh, features 16 bit color, 320 by 420 pixel resolution, fast parallel interface, micro SD card slots, resistive touch interface. Resistive, okay, because I think sometimes they're capacitive. So, uh, a 320 by 420 pixel colorful touch display shield which piggybacks straight onto your Mega 2560 R3 development board. Uh, display photos from the micro SD. <coughs> Uh, card slot on the display to create a slick and professional looking project. Okay, so let's jump over to the specifications. It's mostly about its size there. Okay, downloads. Now that's the manual and that's the data sheet. So did we get both of those? Looks like it. So this is the uh, uh, Force XC4630 and this is the 4630. So this is the data sheet. Uh, uh, okay. Fair enough. Various vital statistics for the uh for the the shield, uh, and there's a manual. Probably has some help about how to program the thing. Yeah, there you go. So it tells you uh, where to find the uh the thing. Now, can we open that link? Uh, I'm not sure how to open that link. Uh. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll come back to that, I guess, if we have to. Now, the other thing was we should just add this into our shopping. Okay. <clears throat> and let's add one to our uh, out to our cart. Now, this then they don't ship to you um, via the uh, via the shipping. You have to go and pick it up in store. Um, so actually that's what I've done I uh, my order uh, is for this I ordered these parts the other day from Jcara I thought it was important for the first project particularly to make sure that I actually bought the uh, equipment from Jcar so that's what I did um, but I already have that equipment here because I ordered it the other day and went and collected it from the store and look at this a bunch of articles there's a lot of articles again isn't there that's great I might just dump that into the um, uh, into the notes as well and uh, then the last thing that we had on the thing was just this cable it's a uh, 50 centimeter USB A to micro B which is apparently the one that we need for the uh, for the Arduino pretty pricey for a cable there I have to say anyway um, we go over to uh, the website and the um, and the uh, pickup from store is um, uh, let's just put in Penrith. That's uh, that's the one that's closest to me. Uh, yeah. So Penrith's just down the road from me. It's across the river. I'm up in the mountains and it's down past the plains, but it's pretty close. So um, there we go. So the total cost for the first project is about 80 Aussie bucks, um, which is what about... Uh, uh, about 50 US bucks. Fair enough. Now, um, we'll just put the, uh, uh, where did we, uh, where did we go? Come on, this one. Just make sure that, um, that link to the, uh, cable makes it into the, the links. Um, now, obviously, you wouldn't need to buy that if you've got a spare uh, uh, micro B cable floating around. I certainly do. I have a drawer full of those things, so 
um, but for the first one I ordered the whole lot from JCAR so there you go that's what you're in in for if you uh, if you want to get the, the bits and pieces from this sponsor um, so uh, that's everything that that's uh, that's that that concludes this part of the video um, so the next thing to do is go over and build the uh, project so let's jump over to the bench together and get on with it here we are on the computer again I um, I realized after I uh, showed you the uh, <coughs> um, the various bits and pieces on JCAR uh, the other day um, <coughs> that uh, what's that Oh, I see. Um, that we didn't get the uh, the rubber feet that uh, they mentioned in the article about uh, getting some rubber feet for the uh, Leonardo board. So uh, I thought we could have a look here at JCAR and see what our options are. There you go. So you're going to be in the hole for about five or ten Aussie bucks to buy a couple of uh, pack of feet from uh, from JCAR. They come in eight packs, twenty packs, four packs. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Now, I think I've already got some rubber feet in the drawer, and I've already done my JCAR order uh, for this, and I got the uh, I got the Leonardo board, I got the uh, the touchscreen display, and I got a, a USB cable. I would have got some rubber feet if I had a thought of it, but it's done now, and I don't want to drive back down there just to pick up some feet, especially when I've got some feet in the drawer. But I thought I should mention that you can actually get the rubber feet from JCAR. So uh, that's it. I'll take you uh, on to the, uh, to the rest of the video now. Here we are on the bench. And this is the bag of goodies um, that I ordered from JCAR and picked up from the store in Penrith. I paid 80 bucks for this stuff. So uh, that's 80 Aussie bucks, about 50 US dollars. Now... I think we're just going to bin that bag. So, uh, what have we got? Cable, touch screen, and Leonardo. There we go. So, uh, let's go through. Uh, in uh, in order of uh, interest, read in reverse. So uh, this is a Nextech cable connector, computer peripheral, or device with micro uh, B socket, such as a memory card reader, to your PC or media player. It's a USB 2.0 uh, data transfer rate up to 480 megabits per second. Connection Type A mail to USB micro B mail. Length 50 centimeters. Distributed uh, by Tech Brands uh, in uh, Rydalmere, Australia. There we go. So I'll keep the uh, the bit of cardboard for my scrapbook. I'm a bit of a scrapbooker. I keep everything. I'm even going to keep this boring little bit of kit, little bit of packaging. So uh, yes, that will go in our scrapbook together. This is the micro B cable. You've probably seen a micro B cable before. Uh, very good. I'll take the uh, the cable tie off him. Uh, so the next thing is the uh, <coughs> the touch screen. The touch screen. The the. Um, uh, I'm still not really sure if it's a 2.5 or a 2.8 inch. Because uh, we saw both reported. One of them is obviously a typo. Um, just pop these staples out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Here come the staples. And this is Duratech. Duratech just says touch LCD screen and it gives the dimensions uh, of in terms of pixels but not the dimensions in terms of length now I'm gonna need my scissors here so I can get this guy open 
I'll, uh, I'll keep that static bag. I'll put it in my bags bag. And it did come with a pen. Isn't that a nice touch? So, uh, it's got some padding on its, uh, on its pins. This is the, uh, the stylus. Very cool. And, uh, oh no, it's broken. Look at that. Isn't that disappointing? So we've gone to do our inaugural, uh, um, project and the uh, the touch screen that we got has been damaged that's very disappointing very disappointing uh, what are we going to do about that uh, oh gee I'm really not sure what I should do about that ah oh, dear I don't know how it got damaged if it came from the store or if it's been dropped or what uh, how disappointing. I'm going to just take a quick break. I'll come back. Well, I'm back. So, look, uh, the module's been um, damaged. Uh, it might still work. I don't know. But uh, it's a little bit disheartening. What I'm going to do is take it back to the store tomorrow and get a replacement. So, um, I'm going to pause this video now. Um, I did want to release a video this evening, so I think I'll just jump over and, and get some Maxitronics uh, projects uh, happening. Um, we'll return to the inaugural JCAR Mini project soon when I have a replacement uh, LCD module. Um, and we'll com continue with the unboxing of the board and everything at that time. So just for now, we're just going to pause on this one. Um, but uh, I'll be back to finish it uh, soon. Um, and, and we'll just pick up from here. And uh, and uh, it, it, it shouldn't uh, affect you too much. And we can just continue when, when we've got the new board. So I'll see you soon. All right, I'm back. And I'm pleased to report that uh, JCAR replaced my... Uh, uh, screen so no problems there um, I just uh, turned up and gave them my receipt and gave them the broken one and they gave me a new one so uh, there we go it seems to have a plastic cover on it which is good this is the stylus that comes with it um, apparently it's resistive uh, which is uh, not capacitive so there you go there's a bit of a difference I think the iPhone is capacitive smartphones in general maybe I don't know a lot about that technology and so the third thing we've got here is the Leonardo R3 development board. So uh, this is mostly going to be a software job, isn't it? So uh, let's pop this guy out of his box and uh, what does he say on the back? Uh, most of the Duino Tech models use two chipsets. One for the main controller, one for USB communication. <coughs> the Duino Tech Leonardo combines both of these functions into a single integrated circuit which opens the door for more advanced USB functions. The development board also boasts more than 12 analog inputs and an extra pulse width modulation channel. Distributed by Electus Distribution, uh, Eastern Creek, New South Wales, Australia. They're on the, on the, uh, on the web there. We might as well put that uh, in the show notes. And it's made in China. Uh, Leonardo R3 development board. There we go. Let's pop him out of his box. There we go. So... Yeah, nice and yellow, isn't it? I wonder if all of the Leonardos are yellow. Leonardo R three, made in China, KI Studio, K I K E Y E. There you go. Now apparently this guy has two uh, serial lines: one for USB and one for uh, USB two USBs. There's only one plug for the USB. I think uh, pins one and two, they said. So uh, let's see uh, how we can plug this guy in. Just take the uh, padding off the, uh, the bits and pieces. And uh, I don't think we're going to need to use those, although maybe, I don't know. 
I assume we don't need to set anything there. And this is going to be mostly a software job. Uh, that looks like it's about right to me. Doesn't use all the pins. Fair enough. I want to squeeze it too hard. There we go. So it's all plugged in. I'll leave the plastic sheet on uh, until we're in production. So uh, there you go. Now I think this guy has uh, an SD card reader and it does. You can see it in there. So I'm not sure how to make use of that. But that's it. That's the assembly for our first job. I suppose we uh, put the uh, micro USB cable in down the bottom here. And then we can plug it into the computer and that's uh, <clears throat> that's the rest of the thing. So let's go over to the computer and figure out how to program this guy. Here we are on the computer again. Now I've plugged the uh, device into the computer. You can't see that really, can you? That's it there. The cable's not very long. Um, and it's just got a white screen on it and there's an LED that's flashing uh, orange. There's a green LED that's solid on. Um, and what we're going to do, this is my virtual machine. Uh, and I'm just going to go to redirect USB device. And then I'm going to guess that the one we want is the Arduino LLC Leonardo. That stacks with what we've just purchased. So um, there's obviously a lot of things there, but I don't think they're related. So uh, that's what we want to send through. So let's do that. And now we can put this back into full screen mode, which is how I normally have it. And we can get on with uh, uh, the project. So let's uh, fire up our, uh, our web browser and then hop over to, uh, let's say, well, let's just open all the tabs. Why wouldn't we do that? So uh, this is the wiki page that we're looking at here um, and it's got a link to the bits and pieces and this is the symbol keyboard that's there so that looks like the same one there and we're going to need the software and we're going to need uh, what are we going to need apart from the software? Maybe some libraries or something. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go back over uh, here and open up this link here. Um, and then there's a shop item here, you see, May 2024, uh, one shop item. Now, I believe that that is for the software. Now, I'm not sure if I've already done that. I may have. I've been here before. Yes, there we go. So the symbol keyboard software, this is where I got it from. I got it from the shop. It's for sale for free. So you uh, you just go through the shop process and you can get this file. You might even just be able to download it there. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, I did get myself a copy and that's it over here. Um, and if we pop in there, there's a hex file, which I believe is actually a compiled version of the software. I wonder if we can open that with something and see what it looks like. Yep, looks like binary stuff that goes onto the thing to me. So, uh, yeah, not real sure about a hex file. I believe that the uh, the software compiles to hex format and a hex just gets uh, sent to the board. And then we've got symbol keyboard and we've got three things. We've got an uh, INO, which is probably um, uh, the Arduino project file. Uh, and then we've got a C file and, a, and a, uh, two C files, one for bitmaps, which will be the icons. And the other one, the XC4630D, probably a controller for the uh, touch screen. So let's see what happens if we double click on this. Arduino loading up. Okay, there we go. Well, it's pretty easy so far, isn't it? I'll give you a bit more of a view on that. Oh, look at that. It's, uh, it's all the code in one, um, <coughs> in one screen. Wow. So we include the uh, the, the XC4630D file, include the bitmaps, uh, include, include keyboard.h, um, and, uh, and off we go. So uh, uh, let's not have a close look at it uh, right now. We're not going to read the code, but we will see if we can deploy the code. So let's see what happens if we do that. So the board, let's connect the... Uh, uh, what have we got? Arduino Leonardo. 
I'm just guessing here. I've done this before. That looks like the one, doesn't it? TTY ACM zero. Sounds good to me. And let's hit get board info and see what happens. Uh, there we go. So uh, it seems to detect Arduino Leonardo. So let's uh, hit uh, hit program. Oh, what programmer are we going to use? Uh, can we just say Arduino? Let's just try the one on the top of the list. So what we want to do? I have a feeling it's not what we want to do. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, 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 uh. Um, what about if we ask ChatGPT about this? Give me a second and I'll go and find out um, which programmer we should use. Uh, I'm just learning all of this, um, so give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. I asked ChatGPT and it said that it doesn't matter, but it also said you might as well set it to AVR ISP Make 2. So let's say uh, that's this one here. Um, so we might as well just do what it says, but apparently it uh, it doesn't matter. So um, uh, we've got the I think we've got the two crucial things, the board and the port. I expect those are the bits and pieces that matter. So um, let's compile this guy. Okay, no no keyboard .c uh, file. So there we go. So we need the uh, keyboard .h. Uh, what are we going to do about that? Give me a minute and I'll see if I can figure it out and I'll be back. All right, well, I've got some instructions, so let's follow those and see how we go. So we want to go um, uh, sketch, uh, include library, and then we're going to want to add, uh, uh, let's try manage library. There we go. Let's see if we can search. I don't know. I uh, haven't used this for a while. See what happens if we put in keyboard USB host. Seems to be a lot of choices. <clears throat> um, now I did read the instructions with you yesterday. But honestly, um, I don't have a very clear recall of that. It has been a day. So uh, before we uh, pick the library, let's see what it had to say about this in the thing. So uh, <clears throat> uh, assembly and programming. So uh, we've done that part. Um, and uh, uh, you should see initialize with graphics screen. Okay, software details. Uh, that's the C file for the display shield we're using. Uh, bitmap C. Uh, okay, uh, you need to correct the alt codes. Sure. Uh, customization. All right. It doesn't seem to have gone into detail about how to add the uh, the keyboard. Uh, library uh, unless I'm not seeing it and if I'm not seeing it you probably are let's just put in keyboard.h and be very specific about that here we go keyboard by Arduino that'll be the one for sure and it's up to version 1.06 uh, allows an Arduino board with USB capabilities to act as a keyboard this library plugs into the H HID library Okay, it can be used with or without other HID. Uh, HID, by the way, human interface device like mouses and keyboards. Is. All right, so uh, let's click more info and see what it says. There we go. There's the keyboard library. Sure, you can give me cookies. Now let's uh, go to lab and uh, JMP01. Add the link in there. Uh, this keyboard function enable 32U4 or SAMD. 
uh, micro based boards to send keystrokes to an attached computer through their micro's native USB port. Note, not every possible ASCII character, particularly the non-printing ones, can be sent with the keyboard library. The library supports the use of modifier keys. Modifier keys change the behavior of another key when pressed simultaneously. See here for additional information on supporting keys and their use. Compatible hardware, Leonardo, wonderful. Ah, oh, look, there's documentation for the Leonardo. Cool, notes and warnings. Uh, these core libraries allow the 32U4 and SAMD based boards, Leonardo, Espolora, Zero, Du, and MKR family to appear as native mouse and or keyboard to a connected computer. A word of caution on using the mouse and keyboard libraries. If the mouse or keyboard library is constantly running, it will be difficult to program your board. Functions such as mouse.move and keyboard.print will move your cursor or send keystrokes to a connected computer and should only be called when you are ready to handle them. It is recommended to use a control system to turn this functionality on, like a physical switch or only responding to specific input you can control. Refer to the mouse and keyboard examples for some ways to handle this. When using the mouse or keyboard library, it may be best to test your output by first using serial.print. This way you can be sure you know what values are being reported. Functions include keyboard begin, keyboard end, keyboard press, keyboard print, keyboard print line, keyboard.release, keyboard.release all, keyboard.write. See also uh, keyboard and mouse control example, uh, keyboard message example, keyboard logout example, uh, keyboard serial, keyboard reprogram. Cool. Opens a window in the Arduino IDE and reprograms the board with a simple blink program. All right, and here's the doco for the Leonardo. Did we put that in our notes? I don't think we did. Let's put it in. In we go. All right. Now, uh, the Leonardo differs from all preceding boards in that the AT Mega 32U4 has built-in USB communication, eliminating the need for a secondary processor. This allows the Leonardo to appear to a connected computer as a mouse and keyboard, in addition to a virtual CDC serial slash COM port. There's the uh, printout, pinout PDF schematics and CAD files. Fascinating. Tech specs. Features. The Arduino Leonardo is a microcontroller based on the 18 Mega 32U4. It has <coughs> 20 digital input output pins, of which 7 can be used as pulse width modulation outputs and 12 as analog inputs. A, nine, a 16 uh, megahertz uh, crystal oscillator, uh, micro USB connection, a power jack, and an ICSP header, <coughs> and a reset button. It contains everything needed to support the microcontroller. Simply connect it to a computer with a USB cable or power it on with a DC, AC to DC adapter or battery to get started. USB communication. The Arduino Leonardo has built in USB communication that allows the micro to appear as a mouse keyboard on your machine. Uh, battery connector. The Arduino uh, Leonardo features a parallel, uh, sorry, a barrel plug connector that works great with a standard 9 volt battery to give extra power to your projects. Cool. Um, well, we're not going to need that anymore, I don't think. And let's install the keyboard library by Arduino. That was pretty easy to figure out. Um, so uh, that's installed. Wonderful. We'll close this. Let's try compiling this again. Up we go. Done compiling. No errors. So, uh, uh, archiving built core in temp Arduino. Okay. A uh, bootload of files specified but missing. Okay. Well, we didn't care about that, did we? Um, uh, Sketch uses uh, 15k, 53% of program storage space. Maximum is 28k. Global variables use 300 bytes of dynamic memory, leaving uh, 
2k bytes for local variables. Maxim is 2.5k. All right. So let's see if we can upload. Upload. I'm not sure what we're looking at. Oh, it's uploading. Still going. Could not find a board on the selected port. Check that you have uh, the correct port selected. Ah, that's disappointing. That's always something, isn't it? Now, let's uh, put you back here. And let's just uh, check that. Oh, there we go. It's not set. How did I manage to miss that? So let's choose him and close him and then uh, put him back here and let's try setting the uh, port again. I'm not sure how we managed to lose that. Uh, that's a bit odd. I don't remember doing that. Did I do that? I don't remember. Let's try again. Uploading seems to be hanging again, doesn't it? Still, it says it's uploading. Not seeing anything on the device itself. Okay, that's a bit odd. So, uh, let's see what's happened. I think we've got a problem with the USB. Yeah, look at that. That USB board just keeps disconnecting. Why would it do that? I need it to work. It's not working. I wonder... Why is this happening? I'm going to mess around with my computer for a bit. I'll come back and talk to you more later. Now, look, um, I'm going to work on this with you just a little bit now um, for troubleshooting, but I suspect we're not going to succeed. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll use a different computer for recording this. But first, let's just see what we can do. Now, there's some numbers that come out here, and I'm just going to write those down. So I'm, I'm redirecting the Arduino LLC, Arduino Uinado, uh, 2341. Uh, zero eight. Oh, no, sorry, eight zero three six. Uh, at one to twenty three. All right. Now I'm going to enable that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to uh, put this into full screen mode, and I'm going to open our uh, project here. All right. Now, um, let's just go back into this mode and virtual machine. And it's still selected there. That's very good. Now, we're going to change uh, that. We don't need to. It's connected according to that to this device. Now, I'm just going to confirm that that is still connected. That's good. And then we're going to go uh, sketch, uh, verify, compile. That should be no problem. Done compiling. Sketch, upload. Up we go uploading dot 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 and just timing out here I guess we wait for it to time out it's not gonna work couldn't find a board on the selected port check blah 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 if we go back over here we see that it has been disconnected but you can also see that some of the numbers have changed so it's uh, two three four one uh, zero eight zero three six at one dash twenty five um, so it seems to have, uh, it's changed there from 123 to 125 on the back end. That was the number that changed there was that five used to be a three. So, uh, whatever we've done has caused the Arduino to recalibrate, uh, itself and, um, uh, and reset the connection. And then I have to allow that connection through again. Um, so that's a bit of a problem for me. Uh, I don't know how to automatically allow a USB device if it's going to be doing that all the time. Uh, so yeah, that sucks a bit. Um, if you understand what's happening there and what I could do about it, I'd love to hear from you. This is a, a, a Q, 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 QEMU slash KVM uh, mach uh, virtual machine running on Debian Linux. Um, host. Uh, it's a Debian Linux uh, guest operating system as well and it's running in Vert Manager which is one of the uh, GUI libraries for the QEMU slash KVM 
uh, system so obviously it's not working for us I'm gonna try it on one of my Windows boxes uh, but before I'm gonna do that I'm gonna need to set up a SMB share for the uh, files here that we're using so um, I'm gonna go and do that now and I'll come back when it's all set up and we'll continue okay we're back and uh, we're connected to a different computer now this is one of the Windows boxes I have uh, in my lab I don't use Windows very much so uh, this is uh, uh, I've got this set up to do the recording for uh, the show and that's about it I think I have configured some of this other stuff I'm not sure uh, what's on this computer and what's on other computers I did make some notes but I, I don't come back to it very much anyway we seem to have Arduino installed here and I've mapped the drive uh, the H drive it's connected to my uh, file server that has the uh, the the stuff that I have on my um, uh, on my other computer. So we've got the same files. This is our JMP one directory, and we're in here for the thing. And there's the symbol keyboard project. <clears throat> now I haven't plugged my device in yet, so it's still plugged into this computer over here. I might as well take it over and plug it in. Um, Okay, that seems to have been plugged in and powered up, so we're probably going to have to connect to it. So the board is uh, Leonardo, and the port is COM8. Looks good to me. So let's try uh, Sketch Compile, Compiling Sketch. done compiling. That gave a whole lot more output than the other one did, didn't it? And then uh, let's upload, see what happens. Waiting for upload port, board rate, connect, writing. Done, thank you. Nice one. And there it is. <laughs> this is great. So uh, can you see that? I'm not sure. Um, how am I going to show you this? Hmm. Uh, well, I suppose I could throw you over here. Let's try that. Uh, here we go. So that's me. And uh, this is the thing. Can you see it? I'm not sure if you can see that. But that's the thing. And let's, uh, let's see if it's working. Why wouldn't we do that? So uh, I'll throw you back over to the other system. Okay. And let's uh, bring out Notepad. All right, now let's see uh, what happens. What are we going to press first? How about, I don't know, how about dot, 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 dot. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Maybe I'll try it with the, oop, maybe I'll try it with the, the stylus. This is the stylus. So let's try connect, clicking with that. And dot, dot, dot. Great. One, one, two, three, four, five. It got a bit of a bad read on the uh, thing. Yeah, it's a bit buggy. It's not. It's not getting the. Um, not quite getting the right key there all the time. Interesting. So, that's it. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, uh, it doesn't always send exactly quite the right. Uh, Thing. but uh, yeah that's something to play with so uh, uh, is there anything more I don't know yeah I think that that concludes the inaugural JCAR mini project mission accomplished we got it working we had to use our Windows computer uh, I couldn't get it working on Linux uh, I'm not sure if I'm always going to have that problem uh, if I'm trying to use my Leonardo board I don't know um, or maybe it's only when I'm using the keyboard library and maybe it does some sort of a refresh or something that that's causing that problem. So uh, let me throw you over to the farewell cam and we'll wrap up. And there we have it. Mission accomplished. How exciting was that? So that was the, uh, the inaugural uh, uh, JCAR mini project from Silicon Chip Magazine. Um, Yes, very cool. So we, we obviously had some problems uh, with the USB connectivity through my virtual machine set up on my Linux box. 
Um, that's okay. When we tried it on the window box, it worked. Um, the software uploaded and then it worked as advertised. There was a little bit of a problem that I had when I used the stylus. So I would click on the one particular thing and the other button would press. So uh, yeah, it looks like there's a few bugs there and I'm not sure exactly how you would uh, iron those out. But um, all in all, I'm very impressed and I'm very happy and it does seem all very, very cool. So um, I really would like to use this device if I can get it running on my Debian machine. So uh, I'm gonna play around with it a bit more and, and see if I can uh, improve it and or get it working on Linux. Um, but uh, you know, so far so good. So uh, there was a few little hurdles to getting this done. Obviously, it was disappointing to have the uh, the broken uh, screen, but that got fixed, so no problem. They gave me a replacement, which was really good of them. Um, and then again, you know, just some uh, teething problems with the Linux box. But you know, that's what they say, right? Like uh, Linux free, as in all your free time. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go and mess around and see if I can get it working on my Linux box. But it does work on Windows. Uh, it was a good excuse uh, for me to set up that sharing of my home drive, um, which is now done. So that's good. I can connect that to that and all of my files are uh, shared. So that's good. And um, yeah, I'm, I have to say I'm very happy. So there's the first of many, first of many uh, mini projects. So thanks very much for watching. And please remember to hit like and subscribe. I'm back again. I just uh, wanted to make a quick note before we wrap up this video. Um, that problem I'm having with the, the click where sometimes I use the stylus and I press a particular button, some button further to the right gets clicked instead. Um, so it's, it's registering uh, touch events that I don't intend. Um, and as I mentioned, perhaps the way to solve that is with a software debouncer or uh, just something to, to check and double check that before it sends the key, that the the uh, the stylus has registered uh, within an area like for a sustained period of time, so that you get get multiple readings basically, and then triangulate off that rather than just take whatever event seems to be there. That might be a way to fix it. I don't know. I thought it was possible that the problem was that I hadn't taken the plastic sheet off the uh, display. So I took the plastic sheet off the display and then used the stylus and I still had the problem with the ghost events happening in the wrong key being pressed. So something to work on there if someone's interested in solving that problem. Um, and uh, was there something else to tell you? Ah oh, yes, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that the alt key codes don't work on my Linux box. So um, when I plug it in after it's programmed, when I plug it into my... Uh, um, Linux computer, it, it does register as a keyboard, um, but th those alt key combinations, uh, they don't get uh, encoded relative to some code page and, and sent in as keys. Instead, the alt key is basically ignored and the numbers get typed in directly. So if I press one of the keys when I've plugged it into my uh, computer, I just get like four random digits. Well, not random digits, I get the four digits for the alt key code. Um, or three or four digits, I forget exactly how many it was, but uh, yeah, the alt key combinations don't work on KDE. Um, they did say in the article that it works on Linux, but what does that really mean? It might mean GNOME, so maybe it works in GNOME, I don't know. I use KDE, it doesn't work in KDE, at least not out of the box, if there's something I can do to configure it. There is apparently a, 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 a command line program you can install that will uh, uh, accept Unicode characters and then emulate the keyboard scan codes for those. Uh, something to look at uh, if anyone's interested in that. Um, I, I'm not sure what I'll do. I, I am going to investigate this Arduino Leonardo though because it's cool to know that it has better USB support for multiple devices and stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the problem at uh, the bottom of that problem I was having with the uh, the the uh, the resetting USB device with the virtual machine and all that that seems like a hard problem perhaps a bit beyond my pay grade but I might come back and play with that again in the future anyway look I'm very happy and I was really pleased to get to the end of this the first of many JCAR mini projects so thanks again for watching and please remember to hit like and subscribe